Good evening. My name is Rod. I'm a grateful believer in Jesus Christ. I struggle with codependency and anger. I was asked to give you a brief testimony about my eighth and ninth step steps. Uh, let me pray. Uh, dear Jesus, we thank you for this evening coming together as broken and honest people. We ask for your continued blessing upon this ministry and humbly ask that you continue to reveal to us what we are capable of, the good and the bad, so that we can have a better understanding as to the person you created us to be. Thank you for your grace. Amen. For me, I can't talk about the ninth step without at least mentioning the importance of the fourth step. We made a searching and fearless moral inventory of ourselves. This exhaustive search of my past was such an important precursor to my ninth step amends because it gave me a clear picture of myself and all the people I had hurt and that had hurt me. Tonight, I would like to share two of the many amends I made. First, the backstory. In 1998, I stood on this stage and I said, I do, in marriage to a woman of my dreams. We both were fully committed to a lifetime together. Crap. As Christ desires. We discussed the topic of divorce extensively prior to marriage because it was, the, it was my greatest fear. You see, my parents had divorced when divorce was still rare. And I knew I wanted nothing to do with it. I had personally experienced its devastating effect on me as a child. In my marriage, as the years passed, we became distant and our love began to fade. My response was to constantly chase after the dream, scrambling to find the answers to win her. Uh-oh. Sorry. Win her affection and approval as I once had. My answer was to do everything I could for her hopes that I would win her over. I became the codependent caretaker. My wife was a public figure whose work was very demanding. So I spent my days doing the things needed for my family, while in the evening, we often were attending public events. This fed my poor me victim mentality, and this martyrdom fit me like a glove. Over time, I did not know it, but I gave away much of my identity to the pursuit of my wife and the charade of our public persona. It would take time, pain, and recovery for me to begin to see how all these idols were driven by my own selfish needs and wants. This obsession to get my wife to love me caused me to end up with no friends at all, including the one I was chasing the most, my wife. This all resulted in me experiencing extreme anxiety and unhappiness. This began to come out of me in the form of anger as I found myself acting out in ways that I regretted, all the while still telling myself I was the victim. In 2015, I discovered the worst, and before long, we separated, and over time, we divorced. My greatest fears were realized. Now back to my recovery. When I got to the eighth step, my sponsor told me to get out, of my, get out my fourth step and make a list of all the people I had harmed and become willing to make amends to them all. Of course, I had my list in my head of those I would never want to or need to approach. My sponsor worked with me to explore my motives and to encourage me not to avoid anyone for selfish reasons. Not to avoid anyone for selfish reasons. Inside, I battled meeting with many, desiring to write them a letter or text them instead. How about smoke signals, I thought. Anything but sit with them face to face. There were two in particular that were very difficult. So of course, my sponsor said, let's deal with those first. The first was the man my wife left me for.
Are you kidding me? I can't even begin to tell you the anger I felt towards this man. There were times when all I wanted to do was beat the crap out of him. It took time and recovery before I was fully aware that this desire to harm him hurt me and those I loved. But make no mistake about it, in my anger and acts of vengeance, I could not avoid that I did bring him a lot of pain as I tried to harm him publicly. While my sponsor had empathy for the pain I had experienced, he also helped me to see how it had the power to harm so many. A bitter root defiles many, Hebrews says. We discussed my need to forgive, and we decided that I needed to make amends for the harm I had caused when I played God by avenging the harm he caused me and my family. Together we decided that I would try to make personal amends. I wrote him a letter about the harm I caused him. This helped me flush out my thoughts and then called and left him a message that I'd like to meet. The call went unreturned. I decided to try and hand deliver the letter to his office. I drove to Sacramento and sat at a coffee shop and did my spartzla. If you don't know what that is, see Scott Miller. Preparing myself spiritually and mentally. I didn't know how this was going to go down, but I was sincere in owning my part and making amends. When I was ready, I left and proceeded to his office. I told his staff who I was and was informed that he was in Southern California. Relieved and jumping up and down, I handed them the letter and headed out the door. I was thrilled when my sponsor said he was proud of me and together we agreed it was over. God had different plans. <laughs> A week later, I received a call from him. My emotions went all over the place. As he spoke, I quickly knew he had not read my letter, but he did explain that he had spoken with his father, whom I had made prior amends with. He said he knew I was sincere from what his dad had told him. That was obviously very encouraging. This opened the door, so I owned my part and sincerely apologized. He responded that he had forgiven me long ago and that he was appreciative for my apology. As the program promises, I felt as if a huge weight had been lifted off my shoulders. My second story is my amends to my ex-wife. I had forgiven her long ago, but from the position of victim, I had never owned my part in the failure of the relationship and the pain I had caused her. Now I was ready. I called and set up a time to meet. We met at a Starbucks. By this time, I had a better understanding and a clear view of my garbage through the fourth and fifth steps. I was now sincere with my amends as I owned my part and asked for forgiveness for the years. I did not love her as God calls us to, gently and kindly. <sighs> Sorry. I did not touch on her part. I simply shared and then listened. When I had finished, she spoke. It was with wonderful and freeing words. She told me that for the first time ever, she felt that my apologies were sincere and that she knew I meant it. This time, my apologies and pursuits were not self-serving, but sincere for her. Since that day, we have been on, we have been on consistently good terms, navigating through the storms of raising children in two different households. Today, I respect her as the mother of my children. I do not speak ill of her. And she will always hold a special place in my heart. Let me conclude with this. Although this process was very difficult, I can say I was amazed before I was halfway through. There's no way to describe my growth through these moments. The program calls it the miracle of promises. The best I can say is that I have felt lighter. It has been a spiritual and emotional experience. I have felt the peace that God has promised to us. I am no longer a victim and have such a clear understanding of the mad God, man God has created me to be because I now see what I'm capable of, good or bad, I can make much better choices. 
I also know that through my pain and wounds, I can be used for good to serve others. Tonight is a step in that process. If you are having marital issues, work on them. By continuing to work your recovery, this will turn your eyes off your spouse and put your focus on your relationship with Christ through the work of the steps with your sponsor. Once again, take your eyes off your spouse and focus them on God. If you're single, divorced, or just lonely, he hasn't forsaken you. He has a plan, and if it worked for me, it will work for you. He is there right by your side. Thank you, Jesus, and thank you for letting me share. Hello, my name is Lori, and I'm a grateful believer in Jesus, and I'm in recovery for codependency. <laughs> the ninth step amends process for me was one of true healing in my life and the life of my marriage and children. As a codependent married to an addict, I never took responsibility for any of our marital problems. I believed I was the good one, and he was the bad one, and I often would remind him of that. When I worked my steps the first time, I still had a lot of resentment and bitterness towards my husband, and at that time we were legally separated. I never thought I would be prepared to give an amends to someone that had hurt me the way that he had. It could not come from my own power because I couldn't even see past my hurt, pain, and betrayal. I had to completely surrender this process to the Lord and allow him to work so I can clearly see my part in our failings and make a sincere amends for the harm I caused. I'm using this particular amends as my example tonight because it was the hardest one for me and it was the one that reaped the biggest reward. It's not the norm for a wife to make an amends to a husband in a marriage where there were affairs, abuse, and substance abuse. The world standard would say I had no part, but I live by God's standard, and he is my authority. Last week, Scott Miller spoke about forgiveness that needed to come before an amends should ever be made. Amazing to me was how God was preparing my heart for this process. While my husband and I were separated, with a restraining order in place and no contact, I started to pray for him. The prayers were very general at first and came through gritting teeth and not much empathy or compassion. It's all I could conjure up at that time. But I was committed to change and I wanted nothing less than God's will for my life. I was so broken and ready. As I continued the process of praying and journaling, my heart started to soften Soon the prayers went from gritting teeth to tears, and not tears of my hurt and pain, but tears of the realization of the harm that I had caused this man. Tears of empathy of what he struggles with. Not any of this came from my own flesh. This is the 12 steps with God's grace and guidance partnering with me. When I got to the point where I could hear my husband's name and think about him without wanting to lash out, but I could honestly say I forgive him, I knew it was time for me to make my amends to him. I wrote a letter and I sat with him face to face and read my letter of amends. He had also made his amends to me. While we were separated, he was in AA and I was in Al-Anon. He was able to make an amends to me, sober, humble, and honest. This was my second lesson in this amends process. To be able to receive an amends from someone that had harmed me and to receive it with the same compassion and empathy that I had when I gave mine. 
When we reconciled our marriage, because of the men's process, we are under a new covenant. This was a brand new relationship now, one that had been healed and restored because of this step and God's mercy and grace. The past hurts are forgiven and amended, and neither one of us live there anymore. This past year, I completed a second step study, and my mother continues to be on my amends list. This is one that God has not opened the door for yet, but again, I am amazed at how he works. I have been able to see my part in this relationship as well. And the Lord has been bringing to my mind some positive memories of my childhood that I am grateful for. I honor my mother in these moments by just whispering a simple thank you. And I know that God is preparing me once again for a difficult amends process. I still have a lot of fear of her. And I know the time is not now, but I will continue to allow God to work. There is a time for everything and a season for every activity under the heavens, Ecclesiastes 3.1. The last thing I would like to touch on in the men's process is that in Al-Anon, we are encouraged to add ourselves to the men's process. I, ha- I have harmed myself by striving perf- for perfection And when I would make a mistake, I would put myself down. I would call myself names that I would never say to a loved one or a friend. In turn, when I do this, I am also hurting God as well. He created me in his image. I am his masterpiece. I made an amends to myself and vowed to never put myself down again. And I've stuck to that. This was another huge healing for me. Because of this process, I got my self-esteem back. I have a confidence that comes from knowing I am a loved daughter of the King of Kings, and there is where my identity lays. If we are painstaking about this phase of our development, we will be amazed before we are halfway through. We are going to know a new freedom and a new happiness. We will not regret the past, nor wish to shut the door on it. We will comprehend the word serenity, and we will know peace from the AA Ninth Step Promises. These are not just empty promises. Those of us that have loved ones that's an addict, we've heard enough of those. These are promises that come true in the lives of those who have worked this step. Thank you for letting me share. Hello, everybody. I'm a grateful believer in Jesus Christ. In recovery for sexual addiction, boot addiction, and schizoaffective disorder, my name is Jonathan. Let me pray. Father God, I thank you for this story. Thank you for letting me be blessed. Let me be part of it, Lord. I pray this would encourage the newcomers, anybody that's struggling with their eighth and ninth step. And I just pray these things in your son, Jesus Christ's glorious name. Amen. I was blessed to be asked to share with you tonight about my eighth and ninth step recovery process, specifically the men's portion. Wow, there are so many reasons that these steps have been important in my recovery. As you'll hear it, here it is here that I truly begin to experience the miracle of the promises they became reality. Most importantly is that I know God loves me because this is because of this, I'm truly able to both receive and give his love. And as a man who struggles with co-occurring issues of mental illness and addictions, this was something I never dreamed possible before recovery. First, I want to say it was certainly not easy to work these steps. In fact, it was so difficult, but boy, has it been worth it. The anxiety was huge, but once again, the Lord was faithful as my recovery brothers and sisters surrounded me. As we worked together, they were so proud of me as they encouraged me and cheered me on. The, 
the first experience I want to share tonight was that many of you know that I have stolen from stores early in my life. It would be years before I became aware that, that how important, well, I gained the, I became aware that more important than the article I gained, I gained was the addictive rush every time I worked out, walked out of a store without getting caught. So when I realized I had to face this step and come clean, this wreckage it was not a pleasant reality for me. Working with my sponsor, I realized I needed to go back and personally face the music as I made financial amends with each store. Each store. Everything in me was saying no. Certainly because of the money it would take out of my pocket. But I now, but I now know even more important was for me to face the potential rejection from the people I had to face. Let me simply say overcoming my selfish fear and going back to each store was life changing. The responses were amazing. Some accepted my money, but others did not. But rather than being a negative experience, it was without expect, ex, expectation amusing to watch how each one of them could not grasp why in the world I was doing this. One in particular was even ecstatic that I would take such actions and make these financial amends. Obviously, my fears were never realized as, they, as these experiences became a blessing instead of, a, of the harm I imagined. The second experience I want to share was my amends with my father and my mother. I'm... I am sure you can imagine the fear I was facing when I was advised that I had to go and admit and repent of the ways my addictions and dis dysfunction had hurt my father and mother. I was so afraid. Being a person that has faced so much rejection in my life because of my mental illness, this was my greatest fear. That my own dad and mom might possibly not accept my amends instead in a scary vulnerable moment, reject me. Needless to say, they only loved me through it. Since that time, our relationship has never been better. In fact, today my parents trust me in ways I could never dream of before with my recovery. This is all such a miracle that has happened with the support of my sponsors and my Cambio team. It is so important to note that the events of my men's are not what mattered nearly as much as the miracle I have received through them. Today, I am a different man. Today, I have been able to experience some, something new in my life. This, is, this has not only given me new freedom from my sexual addiction, food addiction, but it's also helped me stabilize my schizoaffective disorder in my general, generalized anxiety disorder too. But most importantly, he's given me the trust and love of others because God has done for me what I could never done for myself. And that says, he has given me victory and freedom through these steps so that today I experience love for myself, concern and caring for other people too. I hope you can share with me tonight what it's like for me, for, it, for me as a person who had never before experienced less, less lived out these gifts. This is a miracle. Thank you, Jesus Christ, and, all, and to all who have shown me that love and care. I appreciate every one of you, and thank you for letting me share. Hey, let's hear it one more time for our mini monies. Rod, Lori, Jonathan, thank you guys so much for the road that you walked ahead of us and uh, that you're able to share your experience, strength, and hope with us tonight. Um, sometimes we're faced with these difficult situations. You guys can be seated. Sometimes we're faced with those difficult situations that 
Um, we don't know what's going to happen. We have uh, maybe legal ramifications to them or things like that. And uh, there's a great illustration that we find in one of the movies uh, from back in the day. I'm going old school on this regarding Henry. And if you don't know or if you haven't seen that movie, it's a movie about a lawyer who's narcissistic and uh, basically power hungry, taking advantage of things. And he wins this huge lawsuit basically because uh, the, the people can't prove that this husband admitted that he was uh, a diabetic. And uh, we pick up in this story, um, this part where this lawyer comes back and is trying to make things right with the people that he's harmed in his life. So if you guys pay attention to the screen. Mrs. Matthews? May I help? What are you doing here? You remember me. We remember you, Mr. Turner. I came to apologize. Are you kidding me? No, I'm serious. Um, just give that to your lawyer. What's this? Your husband did tell the nurse that he, that he was diabetic. It, it's all in there. I'm sorry. Why? I changed. I guess. Why? Sometimes it's not as easy as that, but uh, sometimes we got to knock on that door. And uh, sometimes we're not always greeted with that friendly face. And uh, being able to give them that letter to say, hey, I'm sorry, is huge. To make things right. And uh, if you don't know what that looks like, make sure you're communicating with your sponsor so you guys know what it means to make things right, whether it be your marriage, whether it be another situation um, like that, or maybe it's somebody from your past that you need to make that amends. And so... Um, I encourage you guys, go through this process. Do it right. Don't jump straight to this step. It takes a lot of hard work going through that first, second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh step before you get to this eighth and ninth step of making this amends. But it's worth it. It's worth it. So um, I encourage you guys to do that. Let's stand together and let's close our time with a serenity prayer tonight. God... Grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change, the courage to change the things I can, and the wisdom to know the difference. Living one day at a time, enjoying one moment at a time, accepting hardship as a pathway to peace, taking as Jesus did this sinful world as it is, not as I would have it, trusting that you will make all things right if I surrender to your will so that I may be reasonably happy in this life and supremely happy with you forever the next. Amen. Amen.